Oh, that's what they're here for. I thought they were here for the other. Thing. I don't know. Okay. Okay, we'll do um, number two and then number three. No, two, then four. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, the Transportation Committee of Community Board 7, Manhattan, is hereby called to order, and we're going to do things a little different in order, because kids have to get to bed, so that is priority number one, the uh, secondary street renaming in the honor of Ms. Saunders, um, and then after that we'll do the pedestrian safety project on West 70, and then uh, we'll figure it out from there. So those are the first two things. You're up. Welcome again. And welcome back. <laughs> Sorry about the confusion. I see a full board. It's all right. So we'll just get it to, to uh, read through it. I know you've submitted the, uh, the required, yeah. the required uh, background of, of the Sanders. So right. that's fine. But we know you had some additional things you wanted to say tonight. Right now. I just wanted to show you just how much more she did for the community in the book. Both sides. Both sides. That she wasn't just some ordinary woman who was just some regular activist. She did more. She traveled states upon states in different areas to do what she did. To do what she did was right. This is this is yeah. See that yeah. Did, What year is this from? This poster? Wow. I think that's 1972. And we have some other friends that join us today from the welfare rights organization that they're rebuilding up throughout. And her mother was with my grandmother, um, just doing the same thing, fighting for welfare rights, Detroit, New York, everywhere else together. Actually, she has some interesting stories to tell me when I was a kid. Well, we also have the materials you sent by email. Right. Yeah. Did you get a chance to read any of it? Yeah, I just showed it. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. We had a presentation last time in some detail. So we have these materials. Um, I don't why don't we take the questions as opposed to, to that, making them go through it all again? And if there are no questions, I, we can. I just suggested there's a lot of references of her in that book, and there's one paragraph that's a great. Okay. So okay. I was so that, suggesting she read that. that I read it. New York City in the middle of the fiscal. I think crisis. it's the bottom paragraph. It's the bottom. This is probably what it says by him. Wait, it was Sanders. But beautiful Sanders remained politically active as the NWRO collapsed. I think he wants Dude. to read the whole thing. Yeah. Which one? The whole sentence. Oh, the Detroit's Marion Kramer, who headed the Tell Welfare Rights that. Union, commented years later. Um, working with women like Beulah and the others helped me deepen my development. These were the true fighters. They nurtured a movement. Questions, comments? The only comment is it's sad that we learn about these people after, after they're, they're gone, gone right. you know, rather than being able to tell but them, thank but you, the idea while is they're still alive. Them, so. Yeah, and, and that's exciting. And that's why Roberta, um, I hope that we, for every secondary street name we have, that we have uh, well, let's a do place. It going forward. Let's we have put to do up. something on our in, let's, in the we'll office that's on the website, so people can yes. can see a, a name, go to the web, and find out about the person rather than just see a name. Right. Exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. I think that's because a good we'll start with you. Yes, yeah, because you have two names that it shouldn't even be there. That has done nothing, has for, the done community, nothing really. for the community. Oh, I'm there. not going to ask what those are. <laughs> um, okay. Should we call the question? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Um, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five. All those opposed? One. All those abstaining? One. Um, non committee yeah, members in favor? Okay. Yeah. No. Me uh, three. Opposed? I wish it was two. Abstaining? The yeah. measure passes. So this will be heard by our full board um, 
and the first Tuesday in April, um, which I believe is being held at Congregation Road of Shalom, <laughs> which is 7 West 83rd Street. We, Tuesday, April 3rd. Tuesday, April 3rd at 7 West 83rd. Just let me go, we have 100 signatures? I, we did that before. We yeah, gave right, you right, that. We set. gave you that. They're all set. Thing, you got the we're good. We got okay, more we're all, thank all you set. for coming Thanks out again. Thanks for coming out. We got the other thing. We got thank, the you so thank you so much. Thank you. We have all the stuff. Yeah. Okay, we're moving quickly to number. Uh, what do we have? What are we? What's next? Number four. Yeah. You're on. Okay. I don't know what the point. What are the, what are the children here for? Oh, yeah. We're going to move. We're going to lower the screen. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. Watch your head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can I can navigate it from here. Yep. All right. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Sanji. I work with the New York City Department of Design and Construction. We're going to be starting a project at the 71st Street Bowtie at Broadway Amsterdam. We also have a secondary location. That's at 70th and West End Ave. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Let's see if we load up. <laughs> there you go. All right. Do you have the lights going? Um, it, it's yeah, just the front lights go down. See. <laughs> uh, I also have Roberto Acevedo here with me. He's the deputy director for community outreach at DDC. I think uh, some of you might remember me a couple of meetings ago. I yep. came and gave out some handouts. Oh, was the last one? Was the last one? All right. Well, let's get going. So this is just some project data, a lot of numbers. Um, we started in January, and we're right now the contract is supposed to end uh, towards the end of summer 2018. And that's what we're still aiming and gearing towards. Um, our field office is on East 28th Street, and all my contact info will be at the end, and I also have my card if anybody would like it for further information from me. All right. Um, so this is a multi-site pedestrian safety project. We're in three of the boroughs. We're currently finishing up in Queens and Brooklyn, making our move into Manhattan. We started up in Inwood um, at uh, Broadway Nagel, and now we're looking to move. Um, we have two locations on the east side as well, and now we're looking to move into not the bow tie just as yet, but we're looking to start at 70th Street, Amsterdam Avenue. I'm sorry, uh, 70th Street and West End, but we will be working from Amsterdam to Riverside um with paving i'll get to that so this is the scope of our project right now you can see that we're all over in the bow tie here and then we're also on 70th the majority of our work will be here in the intersection the reason the whole street is highlighted is because we will be repaving the length of the two blocks um, we won't be digging the length of the two blocks luckily <laughs> just in that intersection for some water main work um, and things like that in the bow tie, we're looking at on um, this corner, we're looking at some catch basin work, pedestrian ramps, things like that. We will also be working in the tip of the park and the tip over here uh, in front of the subway. We'll be extending part of it and updating some um, curbing, sidewalks, things like that. And also we'll be working on the dividing wall over here. Um, so the type of work that we're doing, curb and sidewalk, the bump outs where we bump out the corner a little bit, um, pedestrian ramps, catches, you can read all that, manholes. We will be installing Martello bollards, um, and that's a picture of them so you can get an idea of what that looks like. We will also be putting um, in wayfinding signs, which are, you know, the maps of the UR here, uh, things as well, so that would be nice for the area. <clears throat> Andrew, is this going out of order? Yes. <laughs> um, on West End Ave and West 70th Street, um, we have work hours from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. We currently do have two other Saturday locations, so if we are working here on Saturday, it's still yet to be seen, um, but I will be keeping the community up to date on that if we do. Um, we have to maintain certain lanes. There will always be at least one lane open. We do not have any full street closures as part of our work and at the end of the day all travel lanes will be opened up what does that mean all travel lanes will be open up? does that mean just plated uh depending on what type of work we're doing at that specific location but you'd be able to drive in that lane yes 
And what about is it? Wait, wait, okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's, we're going to let her get through a presentation. <laughs> then we'll take questions. Thank you. <laughs> um, community impacts pedestrian access, businesses will remain open, people will be able to get in and out of them. Um, we have a resident engineer on the project and she'll be monitoring noise. So if we're going over or under or wherever we need to be, she'll be monitoring that. Um, some sidewalk and loading dock access may be temporarily restricted. If there are businesses that need coordination specifically, um, they can reach out to me and we will make that happen as best we can. Um, parking may be temporarily restricted in certain areas and some garbage trash pickup may be affected, maybe just moved up and down depending on where our work site is. And again, that could be case by case and businesses can get in touch with us if they have any issues, me specifically. <laughs> um we will be having some water work at 70th and west end ave uh so when we do that if we have any interruption to water service to the buildings a 72-hour notice will go out an advisory and then 24 hours before we will confirm or cancel it because the way city construction works <laughs> things can change in a matter of a day <laughs> um we'll give instructions on what needs to be done by the building we'll also go out and speak with them and let them know Hey, you need to shut your valves, you need to open them at this time, close them at this time, et cetera. Um, and if anybody does not see their water service restored or somebody sees their water service affected that should not have been affected, they can reach out to me or if after hours 311. Uh, anybody with special needs again would need to contact me um, and we can and go with that as a on case by case basis. Uh, we will have rodent surveys coming out because we will have some water work, we'll be digging up the street and road and abatement will take place before the start of work. Um, I send out a weekly construction bulletin every Friday that looks ahead for the next week, Monday through Sunday. If anybody would like to be added to that distribution list, I'm happy to add your email. I send it out electronically. It doesn't get posted or anything like that. The community board is welcome to post it on their website. Not a problem. <clears throat> um, I also send out community advisory notices so when we start up in an area, you'll see something like this. If we have anything um, outside of, you know, what's given out in the weekly bulletin, this has further details usually, um, depending on what, what type of activity we're gonna be doing. So again, my name is Sanchi. I'm the community construction liaison for the project. Um, my contact info is right up there. My email and my phone number, uh, if anybody has any questions and I'm your main point of contact for the project. I believe that's it. Great. Yes, yeah, so if anybody wanted to copy that down. Um, so when is this work approximately going to commence? We would like to begin in the next month or so. We're looking at. Um, when but we will still you actually know when you will start? I'm not sure on that as yet. We, because like I said, we have multiple locations, so it depends on when a crew is finishing up. Then the crew will come over here. And the best way to know that is to get on the distribution list and I send out a notice before that happens. Sorry, you mentioned something about extending. Um, it looked like the south side of the bow tie at 72nd was going mm -hmm. to be extended. Yeah, the, I believe it's the north part is going to be extended, and I believe part of the south part. You know, if you go out and look in the bow tie where it, the striping is painted, but the actual curving sidewalk does not meet that, we're actually meeting the painting now, if that makes sense. So it's currently basically uh, a cushion that's kind of dead space right now it's just painting. can you just describe where you're talking about sure a little we'll better the... Oops, right here. so so right here at this tip it's like got a painted barrier we're just making the curb physically meet that painted out barrier instead of it being painted and the same for here and the same for there i believe yes which is what i asked for 25 years ago. <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> um, there's a city bike station at uh, West End and not West End. Seventieth and seventieth. Amsterdam and seventieth. What's, what's going to be? Do you know? Is it on Amsterdam or is it on seventieth? It's on seventieth on, on the on the north side. Okay. Okay, sure. I don't remember seeing that for some reason. Okay, sure. Um, that would be well, maintained. We'll have that yeah. moved actually if we need to. What we do is we work with uh, DOT's uh, city bike program. So yeah. 
if there's a need for it to be moved, which it may be because at the end of this, we're going to repave this whole uh, area. Um, we'll work with them on relocating it, and then once we're done. We'll for the majority of the work, it will stay there, though, because we're only repaving right at the end, and we're only repaving that portion. We're not digging. We don't have work, sewer work, water work, electrical work. We don't have anything that we need to physically dig for. So it's really just milling and paving right there. Based on past experience with new pavings, um, there is um, they don't relocate city bike stations. Okay. They just remove them, and there's no notice. Okay, sure. And, uh, well, now that you brought it to my attention, I'll make a note of it, and it as well. Very, it would be very good if it included in the notice would be sure. oh, If we need to relocate it, I will send notice as to where it will be relocated okay. to. And um, I will also see if I can have the contractor post some signage, but we'll, we'll have to see when we get there. Okay, and yeah. um, one other thing. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're next, I promise. <laughs> Um, the, um, I, I know you said you're not dealing with signal timings, but uh, at this point, but I just I went there this afternoon to check it out, and uh, I'm a pretty fast walker, sure. and I could not walk uh, east to west across Broadway and uh, sure. Amsterdam. Sure, to that's get part to of the Amsterdam. reason why we're doing this project is to you know extend, and I think the crosswalk actually gets changed based on how people walk across the street. What we can also do, um, I believe we have uh, uh, a sketch uh, that we can give to the community board that shows uh, what the finished product may look like, I mean, just in sketch form. So we could actually send that. That'd be great. Them. Yeah, you'll actually see, because I looked at it today in, in the office, the, the markings, and you actually, to like cross the street, currently you have to go from here to here to here. We're going to extend this tip so that you actually walk straight across. And that shortens your time, your distance, yeah. the or amount of footage you're, you're walking. Speed up Ken's, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be impossible. There you go. Yes, okay. ma'am. <laughs> Very important question. What is a rodent control station? And really, every time you dig, the rats come flying. Everywhere. Sure, sure. And then we get complaints from all the buildings around and some sure. pedestrians. Sure. Yeah, that's why they're surveying them. They can ask each rat what they think of the <laughs> ah, rodent survey. Okay. You know, yeah, our, what our survey will do is they actually put bait in the catch basin, so in the drainage, and the rats, when they come up, they go to that, and they have that, and then they and they, then they go by the way. way. Yes. <laughs> you start it nicely. Do you use dry and dry ice? Uh, I'm not sure what our rodent baiter uses, actually, but I could find out if you'd like to know. Yes. I just want them gone. <laughs> Anything else there? No, I don't want to cut you off. So, two <laughs> questions. I've been doing a lot of work looking at data of where there are crashes and injuries in our community, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this area definitely is an issue. Yes. Uh, and so, really happy that this is happening. Um, and I noticed that we have a decent number of injuries on West End and 70th. Okay. And I'm wondering. I mean, I see what you're doing on at the bow tie. Mm -hmm. What safety improvements are you doing from Amsterdam through Riverside? We have some speed bumps that we're putting in, I believe, and updating that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's um, where the school is, right? Yes, yes, where the school is, yes. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. That's well, there, are speed bumps. Yes. there are speed bumps. Yes. There are speed bumps. There are speed bumps. Yeah, I know that there, we're, we're we have speed bumps. I believe in that the, the finished product also is going to have uh, uh, different types of delineation in the striping of the roadway. <laughs> um, again, we can get you some specifics on that. Um, so you could have a uh, better visual. I also have to see in this intersection where we're doing bump outs because where we do yeah, yeah. bump outs yeah. shortens the so length on, of the crosswalk as well. Right. On 70th, mm -hmm. we can stay on it. Mm -hmm. There, there are um, bump outs on the north, east, and the northeast corner, okay. the southeast corner, and the southwest corner. Okay. That are painted, mm -hmm. and they're just the rubber, little rubber sticks. So are, are those getting? Yeah, they they will be. We're not sure if we're doing all four. Yes, I'm trying to look at that. I know three corners. The fourth corner, which is the south, um, the the north west corner, is just daylight, and that's a problem. But we can talk to DOT about making it a more permanent. You're talking okay, west end, right? On West End. And so my other question is, uh, <clears throat> what's your process for deciding where you're going to be doing work in the future? DMT and usually, right? Unfortunately, if I can make decisions. They're doing the 
they go out basically and they'll say like okay this area is a bad area mm -hmm. yeah and they also take feedback from the community boards as well um they you know get their data and some community board really wants certain yeah i was wondering if you were involved in that as well or if you're just uh Coming in more good yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the agencies that the Department of Design and Construction works for, as far as infrastructure, is DOT and DEP, yeah. and uh, we we are just uh, we do what they want us. Yeah. So the decisions are made at that agency level. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you for doing this. Right, so uh, one of my colleagues already mentioned PS one ninety nine, and when you're talking about water shutoffs and so forth your protocol made it sound like you're interfacing with building personnel mm -hmm. so uh, a i would encourage you to i've already spoken with the custodian at ps199 i'm already know what would, his feeds are and that's great i would i would also is. encourage you to, to include in your distribution uh, the parent coordinator because that's okay. how you that's how the families that will find there okay. you go. Um, so we're okay. can you give her that name or that contact? yeah i would need I you to give me that contact because I can, the school did not give me that so i can't contact her well now um and no so uh, continue on the same vein your your um, notice mm -hmm. kind of presumes organized buildings if you look at the corners you have large buildings that are going to have supers mm -hmm. obviously the school has a has a custodian mm -hmm. but there if you look Especially even turning the corner. Yep, there's a lot of like single family homes. There. And there are things a lot like of that. individual homes. So yep. I'm wondering what the outreach mechanism uh, for those folks is going to be. And, and I'm suggesting flyering in the first instance and then the, give them the option of signing up for your notification mm -hmm. if they want. Yep. But is That's there a pretty much for that? what I would do. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'd go out for. For single family homes and things like that, I've already walked the length of the street and gotten my contact info for that street. But I did also notice that there are multiple single family homes. I did speak to one lady just to ensure that they were single family homes and she said yes. Um, so what I will do is I will flyer on those homes because when I knock on doors, people are at work, they're not around, et cetera. Um, and I will have my contact info fully on that, just like these, um, the startup notice that I showed you. This will go out and this I will post as well, especially because those buildings don't have a point person like a super or something like that. Do we put the screen with your contact yeah. Oh, sure, no problem. Oh, there we go. That's me. Mark, I'm emailing you her contact info. Great. Yes, sir. Um, a couple, two questions. Number one, Gina. you're going to be doing, you're going to be digging up the road in front of the school while school is in session? We're going to be in the intersection, yes. And you don't think that's going to disrupt the school process at all? Huh? We do it throughout okay. the whole city. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean it right. Yeah. Second, second question is a lot of times when your contractors put down steel plates, mm -hmm. they don't level them out. And so what happens is you have a tremendous amount of noise that are coming out throughout the entire sure, night. Sure. What what do you do to if ensure that? If it's after hours and you notice the issue, I'd recommend calling 311 and they will get the message to us and we will tell the contractor to put temp asphalt, to plate it more securely. Things like that. And what's the what's the timeline between calling three one one with that question and your doing that? Um, it, it's it it's really pretty depends. quick. Um, it can happen quickly. Um, can yep. <laughs> the the way in, in a, I'm oversimplifying this. When you call three one one, you make a complaint. Uh, that is routed to the agency uh, that the complaint. Uh, is, is speaking know. towards. Right. Mm -hmm. Then once it gets to the agency, it's immediately uh, sent via <clears> text <throat> and email to the agency commissioner and deputy commissioners. But if you so send this, me an email that night, I'll address it the next morning when I get in. So that, that that's another short answer. Uh, uh, <laughs> a, a backup email. way to do this as well. So it's 311 uh, as well as Sanchi uh, her email. Mm -hmm. Is this a quick question? the time frame for this project mm -hmm. you, it's looking like roughly two months okay. they've said okay. um and but we're just not sure on our start date just as yet so there's no possibility that it could be done like after school ends right. and pushed later right. into the summer but you could be going that way I'm currently but I, yeah. I lived on the block for two years sure and I, I just remember it, i just know it's very highly trafficked sure sure year, and right and that's also why our hours are such that we're not project, we're wait. not starting when buses are yeah. we, our, our hours start at nine so we're not oh, there absolutely. 7 8 a.m when buses right. are there okay, and like i said before all travel lanes will be maintained so they'll fully be able to traverse mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, no, you're you're starting class. after golf loss and before pickup, yes. so that works. Yes. Yeah. Right. Would there be extra school crossing guards? We will have our own crossing guards available. 
Um, and again, if there is a problem, then by all means email or call me and let me know. We, we can arrange to with the parent coordinator to let you know if there is some big event happening at the school. Sure, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, sure. Any other questions? Can I just ask you a question? Um, are you or your office at Liberty to talk about other projects that are pending on the Upper West Side? I wouldn't know about any of those projects. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Okay, you 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 live at the seventieth. Yeah, and I can. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you. Oh wait, wait, that was um, number three. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Who's doing this presentation? Um, I I thought somebody from somebody else was going to be here for that. Um, for number three. Yes. Is anybody here uh, prepared to speak about the Henry Hudson Parkway viaduct? We were told somebody from DOT was going to be here to speak to that, but nobody's here. Are you prepared to speak to um, I can give it a shot. But, uh, no, just, yeah. <laughs> well, just tell us what the issue is. They are, the file. Hmm? I mean, we were... Yeah, we were both there. We were, yeah. Um, I don't know if this is referring to what you, but if you want to briefly speak to it, I mean. Um, is is um is DOT going to use the opportunity of the construction? Or reconstruction of the rotunda to do this viaduct work, or is this independent of that? Yeah, I don't know. That's you don't know the end. Okay, then we really need somebody. Yeah, to we, need, we, need, so, we need Let's need not some. guess at this time. Yeah. Uh, well, last but not least, we, we, we come up to your uh, second. And then there's a new meeting. business item. But right. Go ahead, please. Paul. Okay. I, I would like to go to secondary street renaming for Corinne Petty, a friend and a neighbor. And, uh, um, she was a, uh, an educator, a teacher, a principal. Um, she was very involved in community affairs. Um, she was act, active in human rights issues, in the rehabilitation of neighborhood parks and playgrounds, in housing and community safety, and uh, a lot of social issues that affected the community. Um, when, when did she pass away, uh, Paul? A uh, year and a half ago. Oh. And um, she devoted herself to education. Um, she turned the school that she was principal in around. She got parents involved. Um, uh, she got mental health uh, facilities involved. Um, she was the principal of two. 208 uh, for 23 years. And uh, the school, as I said, was transformed to a school with parent volunteers, a standard uh, driven curriculum, an enthusiastic and dedicated, hardworking staff, and so on. And uh, uh, let me just let everybody know if you're looking at the agenda that. There can't possibly be a northeast corner of Central Park West and 101st Street, so it should read northwest corner. We're talking about that was my mistake. Uh, there were Never no corners <laughs> on Central Park West. This was the only corner, and yeah. so it has uh, to be a western corner. Uh, so there you Paul, go. Was, my bad. Is okay. that where she lives? Or where, she what, lived on the, 101st Street in Central Park. West. And where was the school that she was principal of? Do you know? Where? Yeah. 112th Street between Adam Clayton Powell. Yeah, I believe it's Community Board 9. Uh, yes, it, no, I'm sorry, it's 10. Yeah, Central Holland, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, but it's actually District 3, the same school district as ours. Yeah. 
Okay. And she she was very active in um, in civil rights uh, activities. She was very active in community activities. She was uh, politically active. Um, I, I I'm at a loss for words. Uh, is it, Oh, we got it. It's okay, we got it. Um, so, as per our regulations, um, if if by the next meeting you get us to 100 signatures from the I've meeting, got you've okay. got it. And and some uh, written uh, like a biography and some of. Does she have family in the area? Paul? Yes, she does, and that they're, they're informed of this. And uh, I actually have her bio her biography here with me. And um, if you leave it to listen, board, can the women's. It. The woman is well deserving of this honor, um, uh, and and uh, as a friend, I miss her. And um, and uh, anyway, that's all from me until so the next time. So you have a biography, and you have a hundred signatures with you? No, I don't. Oh, okay. I don't. I didn't even know about the hundred signatures part. Um, my only. Um, experience with street naming has been here with streets that have been renamed and I've been there and uh, I, I never thought I would be doing this actually mm. and so uh, I never looked into it. If you could leave so, us a copy of the bio or, or email absolutely. it to the board office that would help. Absolutely. Would then, you, then you've got to get out there and make people sign your petition. Do you know if anything it has or or is planned to be done for her in the Harlem community by any chance? No. Or the, the street where the school this is? is no. No. Not the this. school is actually the subject of the controversy right now because it is a unique or it is a, a, a vanishing breed. PS 208 is a three to five school. So and it's it shares uh, space back to back with PS 185. Which is a K to two school, so it's a, it's one of the rare schools where they split the elementary grades between two. So they have two principals and two buildings. In this case, they happen to have a common lunchroom and a common gym, um, and it was a, a it, it served a primarily poverty population and had um, in a generation ago had a real problem with maintaining standards and achievement. And while I didn't know her when she was the principal at 208. We inherited the good work that she had done to stabilize that school. Although now, unfortunately, because of an educational difference in, in, in position, they are merging 185 and 208, and the principal of 208 is the odd man now. Or odd man now. So, and Paul, last question: um, How long did Miss Petty live on that block? You know? uh, since the late 60s. Till up till about a year and a half ago, you say. Yes. Okay. Oh, this the, she. Uh, uh, this is her only neighborhood. Mm -hmm. was, was, okay. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Sounds like a really good person. We will hear it next Hold month next when you bring the uh, the the bio and the signatures. We're we're, at, we're we'll be talking about it then. Okay. Thank you so Ideally, much. Ideally, the bio would be emailed to us beforehand so we yeah. can read it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, we actually got through the agenda, I think, in a record time. Well, we do have a new business. Well, we have, we have new business, two, but, two, two, yeah. but I just wanted <laughs> to ask in, in this small <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Okay, she, new business. Should, yeah, she well, she that's going to take two hours. Right. Okay. Okay. You should come to we preservation once in a while if you want to see how long it Please just give us your name for the record and we'll listen to you. Uh, I'm not going to do that. It's fine. It's very nice to see all of you. My name is Hilda Chazanovitz. I can spell it C H A Z A N O B I T Z. Um, kind of like it sounds. Yeah, it's easier when you see it yeah. on the piece of paper. So we all know each other. I've been here before. Um, you last saw me in May at a full board meeting where you passed a resolution uh, asking the Department of Transportation to look into the notorious intersection at 96th and West End. This is where I was struck by a vehicle on June 8th, 2016. I survived some very serious injuries. I'm lucky to be here at all. And um, uh, for those of you who might need some 
refresher. Um, there was PS75 on the corner. This is that intersection that leads into the West Side Highway. The stats are appalling relative to what's happened surrounding there. And you know we've asked DOT to, for a treatment for a curb extension on the south side or a pedestrian island. We have asked them for cameras. We have asked for so many things. And now have. that intersection is going to take on increased importance when the rotunda work goes on and the 79th Street entrance exit to the HHP is closed and everybody will be exiting there. Well, that hey, I didn't can know. Can we add so that you, to the letter that's going out to DOT? Um, I didn't yeah. know that until you mentioned it at the beginning of the meeting. So um, I'm here because I feel like there's a real stalemate. Um, I don't mean for you to relive the horrific accident that happened, Listen, but do you, can you just tell us what direction the vehicle was coming from and, and where sure. you were struck? Um, no problem. I was crossing uh, 96th in West End from my corner to where PS75 is. So that's from the north north west to the to southwest. southwest corner. And I was in the crosswalk with a green light. And I can't tell you exactly what happened because right. I don't know. Um, but uh, an SUV was making a left turn to going go north on West End to get onto to the, the highway. Parkway. Yes. And either was in a hurry or texting or distracted. I mean, one of the really frustrating things for me is about the lack of accountability for drivers, but that's beyond the scope of this conversation. What, what I keep thinking about at this very moment is what happened in Park Slope to those kids. And PS75 is there. These children are older, but I think I've told you in talking with crossing guards. You Not know, by much, the kindergarten. What? Not that much older. They're well, the kindergarten. They're, 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 they're some, yeah. somewhat older, and the crossing guards are risking their lives every day, as they yeah. report to me, because, you know, they're someone just might, you know, be in so much of a hurry that they would have very little regard. So for me, I've been working very closely with Helen Rosenthal's office with transportation alternatives, with Families for Safe Streets. I've tried for months to call into the um, mayor's interview on Friday mornings. I haven't gotten through yet. I mean, I've tried a lot of small things quietly, but I'm asking you once again, what can be done? Because nothing has changed. In fact, it's even worse because there's no painted crosswalk anymore mm -hmm. for now months because of the construction that's been going on there. So it's even more dangerous. And to add to that, when we were there one morning when the school, when the children were crossing the street to the school, and the principal came out and, and was explaining how dangerous the infrastructure I, I could have actually guessed the direction of travel that you were struck by. DOT has installed a green left for northbound West End heading to the parkway. If five vehicles can get through that, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And then it's a red arrow, but people still go through that red arrow in order to get to the damn parkway. I'm sh I don't doubt it. And again, I'm not an engineer. I don't know enough about street design, but I know from the 2013 study, Nelson Nygaard, there are some simple fixes that um, hopefully wouldn't create problems for the drivers at the same time. Although from my perspective, I'm more interested safety. as a pedestrian, as a safety. So I, I'm we here. We have asked DOT to tinker with the timing of that light to give pedestrians more you time. Have. And you don't even want to know what they, how they're responding. So no how is going? Station. Well, let me just say also, isn't there a dip um, west of the intersection? Yes, I think it goes that, down. It goes, it goes down. down. I, I it's the whole street. Psychologically, from that Broadway, just, from yeah. Broadway all the way down. Well, it's it's going down, from Broadway it's down, down, it's downhill. It's, down it's already downhill. Sure. Down. It's, it's already downhill that way. There's something about yeah. that yes. that but, makes it less safe. But if you stand at the corner, as I have on several occasions, it, it it's it's horrible to just watch what happens when cars are making a right turn from West End. There are cars making a left turn. There's just a lot of congestion. And again, it's 
What my fear is, and I'm not trying to be melodramatic, is that DOT will act if a child is killed. And, and the reason I'm not saying that is because of what, uh, what unfortunately would, just happened in Park think. Slope. It seems that there will be some action, but it shouldn't have to be that way. Right. No, no intersection cries out more for a camera than that one. And there used to be one, then there was a dummy one, and that was removed. And we have been on DOT's case to get cameras there. We have asked our statewide officials who, you know, the yeah. number of cameras that, that you can get is authorized by the state yeah, for some yeah. crazy and, reason. And TA is doing a lot on that front. So what, what, well, we're, what we're, we're doing, we're actually Roberta, Andrew and I are, are, are as dissatisfied as you are. And we're meeting with someone higher up than the, the typical person who comes to our meeting in the DOT to talk about these issues. Believe me, we have a long list. We do. And, and that we are going to and and have well. okay. yeah. I have a letter drafted, which I haven't sent, obviously, to Luis Sanchez and to Polly, but I'm not sure what the right timing is or how to send it to us as well. Okay. So should I send a letter? Sure. 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Send it. Make sure to copy us on it. Though. And copy. I'll copy this. Yeah. This is your card, Roberta. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The hey, what if there were no turn lights? You just had red lights. They stopped north and south, and then they stopped east and west. How would you get on the parkway then? <laughs> How would you go across town? Because it just goes well. Maybe traffic. what Paul's talking about is a split phase where cars can't turn until. You mean an all stop? Yeah, all like stop. a barn stance. Well, no, they've, they've rejected like the barn They stands. rejected they the, reject barn stands. the barn stance. They said that it wouldn't work at that intersection. Why? I, I, I don't, I don't, I never got a complete a answer timing. to yeah. that. Yeah, I would guess that I mean, that intersection gets really backed up, and uh, especially in the mornings, you get traffic backed up to at least 103rd Street uh, for people wanting to make the turn, and there's just not enough time wake for. Wake me up every morning. And I'm not, I'm not I'm saying sorry, that I don't know your name, um, Rich. Rich, I, I think that might be it because as I've learned, there's a term called back pressure, mm -hmm. and DOT pays a lot of attention to that. And evidently, the barn stands may have created more of that. You're shaking your head. Does that sound right? I mean, um, I'm speculating. They never had a barn stance there, but I believe that that is the, part of the reason why they didn't yeah. do it. But you there's were at other Rosenthal's things. Event at that corner. Yeah, I yeah, mean, we you can extend the curve. I mean, there's a lot of Now things. there's added urgency because there's going to be an awful lot more traffic right. using right. that intersection. What you're telling me and is the status quo is, is not acceptable. So rest assured, we have your back on this one. Okay. So I don't know if you are, but I'm unsatisfied with the answer we're giving you uh, of sending another letter. I think we need to take greater action. We are. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're meeting with, with, uh, we are. They're, they're meeting with the, okay. with the DOT, well, the DOT to discuss the fact that they're person. not responding to, and again, the list yeah. goes on for pages, uh, a whole list of things we've asked for. And so what more can we do then to, to raise it up a notch at the DOT? I know I never no, thought I would become an activist, but I, I'm sort of feeling like I've had to. Yes. Yeah. I can engage people with the school. I mean, I, you know. I, I'm I, also going to see the commissioner next Monday at MTA meetings. I will okay. put a special word in about this intersection and the importance of it. I'm on the board of our co-op. I have friends who are well connected in buildings nearby. There is a way to sort of make this a kind of grassroots thing, but I'm not sure it's the right moment for this. Our board will work on it. So, so recently, we, we passed a resolution recently putting DOT on notice of an imminent danger on Riverside. This is much worse. And this is one where we know that there have been a lot of injuries and it's actually gotten worse since the West End redesign. We, we passed a resolution on this as well. Yeah, in May of 2017. Yeah. Resolutions don't cut it right. anymore. We have to do something yeah, else. But we have to yeah. The other thing, too, is that because of the, the mess at that intersection, traffic backs up can be 105th Street in the morning, mm -hmm. and then everybody's beeping, and everybody's getting mad, and so they rush and up to, to get... up to Broadway and 96th, yeah. where you know there's intense traffic it's going insane. to the subway. It's insane. Mm -hmm. So everybody's mad, everybody's rushing, and nobody's really giving anybody an inch. And, and, the, and, it's and just the answers we've gotten are not acceptable yes, anymore. Yes. Well, I, excuse me. When they put 
guards there. The guards stand on the corner at 96 and Broadway and talk to each other. They do not. about school crossing guards? No, these are. Oh, DOT guards. They do nothing. They. I was coming up, going north on Broadway. They're probably trying to stay alive. I, I, well, I was going north on Broadway and the guy gets up and he starts telling the traffic to go west. Cars are in the middle of the intersection. He never looked. People start slamming on their brakes. Other cars are going. I mean, people miss each other by inches. They don't know what they're doing. They're not and properly they trained, the and they them. hang out. So even if they say they're going to give us more crossing guards or more police, don't believe it, please, because it's not going to function. Rich and then Dave, and I then we got to move. To oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Marissa, did you want to say I something? Know, I, hi, I, I apologize for coming late, and so maybe you discuss this. Hi, Hilda, the Hilda Rosenthal's office. Hi, how are phone. you? Um, so I don't know if you've gone over this, but I have updates about okay. the intersection. Oh, good. Um, that we have. You know, maybe you don't. So I'll just. Um, so they are. Uh, Helen did a walkthrough with uh, the Manhattan Borough Commissioner. You you were invited, but I think I it was too late notice, and you guys couldn't yeah. couldn't make it. Um, but from that walkthrough, they are going to be making um, designated left turn um, markings on the intersection so that start cars stay in a lane when they're making the left turn. They a lot have of that on northbound West End to, left, to, to uh, west on uh, 96th Street. Correct. It doesn't accommodate that many vehicles and you know that the green left, which I spoke about before you got here, is good for maybe five vehicles getting through, yeah. then it turns and people continue to go through anyway. Did, did you talk about a um, pedestrian island? Uh, on 96. Island. So uh, they will not be making changes to the traffic. We wanted a designated right turn uh, traffic. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just getting off the bike and I'm freezing. <laughs> My brain isn't functioning quite well. <laughs> we wanted a designated right turn onto 96th Street um, coming uh, south. Um, they will not do that. They will not extend the curb out, unfortunately. Sometimes, you know, when you do the neck downs, that's a good safety feature. They will not be able to do that at that intersection. What they what they will do are these left turn markings. They're going to make left turn markings going north, going south. Um, we are meeting with the with the uh, police department. Um, Chan, uh, Officer Chan, to no, I think with the New York City, yeah. with the New York City Police Department, to have a permanent officer stationed yeah. at that intersection, um, because I think the infrastructure changes aren't coming that we want to see, that we've all asked for, begged for, sent many they, letters about you guys for the, years. Did they give our city council member a reason why, why they can't do these infrastructure changes? They did, and I'm, I will, I. I don't have it at the, I don't want to misspeak, so I'm happy to send it to you. I'll follow what, up what with you and send it to you. What we've been talking about is one particular side of the intersection, which is where cars are going north and making the left on 96 to go to the highway. Mm -hmm. And that's where he'll Coming be north. And, um, yeah, that seems uh, to and be that's, the that's the most issue. problematic part. Because they, they are willing to do a painted neck down on the, uh, on the, southwest corner, the corner where the school is, mm -hmm. because there's a sewage a drainage pipe there, right. they cannot build out a normal sort of 11 foot concrete right. neck down there, but they will paint it out and put bollards there. Mm -hmm. The issue now is finding someone who will commit to maintaining that. It has to get shoveled when it snows and things like that. So I'm speaking to the school to see if the custo if the school would take on that responsibility. We were, we were um, mentioning what needs to happen there is a is a pest, is a divider in the middle of 96 which channelizes the turning drivers, forces them to slow down. Unfortunately, one unfortunately one they've turned down most of the infrastructure um, that we've all been fighting. I think that's, a, that's, we've all been that's fighting an indication for. that they're prioritizing the movement of traffic for only a couple hours a day. I, over, I agree with you. Over human life. I absolutely agree. And Marissa, you we know have, that 
when the rotunda work starts and 79th oh, Street is closed, this intersection is going to have a hell of a lot more traffic. Well, we also need to think about the 97th Street cross town where we're going to have to figure out what's going to happen there when construction starts there. We're going to have two major construction projects, mid-block and on the corner of the block. Um, and we're going to have to rethink. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. possible that they we they could think about doing something with the with the 96th Street cross town like they did on 86th Street, where they have the layover be on the uh, east side of Broadway, um, and so that we don't have this backup. Because one of the problems is the backup of the turning cross town yes. buses, right, from coming down West End on to 96th Street. Um, so if we could alleviate that, that would be helpful oh, yeah. as well. Good luck. So sorry, those are my, those are yes. just the updates I know. So I just wanted it's to pass really it on. Thanks for that. Yes, it is. Okay. I agree. They are not, um, they're we, not. We actually accepted. have a, a, a good announcement to make, which is that um, New York City Transit is coming to the Museum of Natural History the evening of March 26th to the Linder Theater to make a, um, a, a thorough presentation on the Enhanced Station Initiative for 72nd, 86th, and 110th. They will have um, a presentation. They will then do something as they've done at the L train open houses, uh, which is they will have boards with personnel there, and uh, you can engage these personnel and find out in great greater detail exactly what is happening to each station. Um, you can leave comment cards, but you can you'll you'll find out a lot more than just the the regular presentation. They're there to answer questions, to give you your transit alternatives, that uh, what additional services will be provided, and the like. So um, this is something they're doing for us, um, and I'm excited to to announce it. And thanks to Roberta and Howard and Elizabeth um, uh, for get helping us to to get this all in the right direction. So it's Monday, March 26th starting at 6.30 p.m. at the Linder Theater. You enter on 77th Street um, at the Museum of Natural History. And it's up on that website. And it is it's on, on our webpage. Um, the CEC, the Community Education Council, has um, sent it out to their crowd. Uh, we are, we've sent a copy to the West Side RAG, and to all the, we'll send a copy to all the local electeds. Ken? Um, I just wanted to mention, I'm glad Marisa's here, that um, one one big concern that I have about this is, um, and this is a very uh, parochial concern, but I, there's a newspaper vendor on my corner at 86th and um, Clinton, uh, Central Park West, who operates out of a doorway, um, uh, sells paper. He's been there since 1983, and uh, 86. Um, I'm an 87, but uh, that's, um, he's my newspaper guy. Here and when the station is shut down, um, he's going to lose uh, about half his business. But he can't move because a lot of his business comes from neighbors who just come to get their paper. So I've reached out to the MTA uh, to see if there's anything they could do for him. Um, and I haven't heard back, unfortunately. But um, it's uh, he has quite a following. He has a lot of uh, inf influential people who um, buy from him. So we can go to the mat for him if we have to. But um, Marisa, I have I have one quick thing. Well, can I, I, could um, I get um, a response? Oh, I thought you finished. Is there any anything that? The, Helen can do. You know, I think you know, I'd have to think about it. I'm not sure. Um, it sounds like he'd want to stay there for the neighbors of yeah. the buildings, right? right. I, I don't know. I'd have to, to think about what would be possible there. Mm -hmm. Well, he, has, he estimates he's going to lose about two, 250 to $300 a, a week. Wow. Yeah. And he's barely surviving. Yeah, that's true. So when they, so when, you know, when they did the Second Avenue subway, they did have some. They did do something for the small businesses there. Mm -hmm. I don't. Obviously, that was a much larger thing. Went on for much, for much longer. Mm -hmm. I, I could see about what, what that was, what that ran through, to see if there was anything that's possible. We could reach out to small business services and see if there's any, anything, that might be done there. 
I don't know. Let me think on it a little bit. I'm not sure. Okay, he's not a bona fide small business. I mean, he's not. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't have a storefront. That's right. A no, answer. I understand, but he's a vendor. Yeah. Right. Yep. I have a question for you. Every time it rains, my neighbors call me because at the corner of Broadway and 98th Broadway. Street, yeah. by Lenny's Bagels, which they is the northwest it. corner, <laughs> you know where it is. There, yeah. We have a lake that forms. It's really and it stagnates. And it's disgusting, and it takes it a very is. long time for it to go away. Yeah. There's, I, I don't understand why there can't be a catch basin there or some grading to move the water towards a catch basin. There can be, but it's a twenty million dollar project. <clears throat> well, so I'll just write a check. Be. Yeah, <laughs> 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 it's just a. It's just a huge cost. Next time they grade the road, is there something? So they different? tried that. They yeah. tried that the last time they repaved. Yeah. And it didn't work. Didn't work. No. I mean, I've lived there since yeah. '78, and I've never seen okay. it dry. Can yeah. Can just yeah. brush that down? You can't yeah. move the storage. Just brush the No, it's it's too much. It's just too much Respect. water, and it backs up the street. Anyway, yeah. thank you. I just want to quickly go back to the meeting, um, the BC meeting, at our last meeting here in February. Um, we talked a lot, we asked a lot of questions to the MTA personnel who were here, and they promised to have answers by the time of our next meeting, oh, yeah. including the residual effects of ridership on the one train, what's going to happen with the M10. I just want to make sure when we do this meeting that it's not a rehash of their February presentation. Mm -hmm. So anything as you guys are, as we're getting this organized, we have two weeks now to do it almost to get, you know, get the program ready. I think we need to answer well, they some have, of these questions. Well, they have answered um, two things. Since then, um, which which what are those? Yeah. Those are increased M10 bus service during the period, and three-legged transfers will be issued if right. you now take the subway to a bus. So and now with the with the construction, if you have to then take a, a bus to a subway to a bus, you will not be penalized. It will not be an extra. I just think most of the people who are coming to the meeting are gonna they will have looked yeah. through the presentation and they're gonna want to know like how does this affect my transit? Exactly. You know. So there. They're going to have a presentation with a screen, and then they're going to set up boards in the, the long hallway that leads from the 77th Street entrance. Yeah, I forget what that hallway is called, but yep. yeah. And they're going to have easels, and there'll be different stations, and people can go with their specific questions. They'll have much more detailed, they're preparing the boards, um, showing the level of work at each station and what is being addressed. My only point is just like, I don't want it to a meeting where they're like, we'll get back to you on this. Like it's you happening like a back. week later. So we have well, to- Well, that's like, definitely the back to you. Questions right. to We're going to send okay. them, we can send them some questions. Yeah. Yeah. Rich? Yeah, I want to follow up a new business thing on the email I'd sent around uh, saying that we should oh, do yeah. a meeting with BCI yeah, about the issue of delivery bikes. Yeah. And I don't have the answer. I I know that there, it's a really complicated issue. A lot of people in the community hate e-bikes, but the data doesn't seem to be bad in terms of injuries or crashes with e-bikes. I don't know that it's necessarily an e-bike versus push bike issue. There's also the issue of I mean, a lot of these workers are living in really tough conditions. And I think that we need to hear from the workers and hear their perspective. They're never also, going to speak to us. No way. There's no way. Sure, they would. We no. can get. Well, we can get Northern people who represent, represent the workers. And um, it's a it's a business issue. Really? It's a yeah. consumer issue, and a lot of people in the community need to keep bicyclists. And I think that the delivery bikes are a big cause of this. And I think it is a really complicated issue. And I'd love to see us have a meeting with BCI and invite the community. I think it would get a lot of interest. It's an issue that a lot of people feel very strongly about. And uh, one really interesting thing, there was a Fast Company article that talked about e-bikes. And one thing it said was that Grubhub is doing 90% of the bike deliveries. Um, it also said, and I can read, uh, did, did while they- you, Rich, did you just say Grubhub is responsible for 90% of the use the of e-bikes? Of no, the, not of the use of e-bikes, of restaurant deliveries. Oh, oh that's like, look, well, Yeah, which would be, then. So a really interesting thing, and this could get to a, um, a city council issue, is it says, while they do not set worker schedules, platforms like Grubhub facilitate payments to workers, they manage tips, and they set delivery times that customers expect workers to hit. And those customer expectations have already been molded by e-bike usage, which allows cyclists to travel faster. Which makes me wonder, is Grubhub setting expectations for the workers that are impossible to meet without breaking the law? And are they basically forcing cyclists to, you know, number one, use e-bikes, go the wrong way, run red lights, 
And is it impossible for them to meet delivery times uh, legally? Yes, yeah, Most of the time, they don't even hire a worker unless they can show them how many bike. What did you say? I didn't hear you say. Most of the time, they won't even hire a a worker unless they can show that they have any. Oh, bike. That's probably why, because they can't meet the times if they don't. So Grubhub guarantees a certain time of delivery. Is that it? No, and that can basically no. only be done by an e-bike. It, but it becomes a sort of expectation. expectation. They give you an, a window of delivery time. But the thing is this, from my point of view, and I'm not the world's greatest bike enthusiast, but I do think that in this case, the e-bikes, if they're handled properly and if they're licensed and people get some training and they're taught to obey the same traffic rules that cars do, that you know um well they can't be licensed they're illegal right? well that <laughs> they, they we legal. have to, i know we have to ask for our representatives to look into it and change the law because it's silly this is where the future is going but then i have a big question do they go in the bike lane or the car lane car lane well, that's a good answer. That's a, that's a whole different it, It's just like a motorcycle. No, it's part of it. You can it's, it's like a motorcycle. You have to go. But it's, a mo it's, it's like a motorcycle. And then swerving to avoid it. Right. Yeah. It's all part of the discussion. Well, then we yeah. need to have this discussion. But to just say we that e-bikes should be you know forbidden doesn't make any sense in terms I'm of sure. the real you know life on the ground. Or uh, Marissa, no. Um, what is the home base of, of Grubhub? Do we, are they based in New York or somewhere else? Chicago, I think. I don't know. They're based in Chicago. Well, we'll look it up. It would be great to get somebody from Grubhub to come and see. They won't come in Chicago. They, come, will they? And they didn't speak to Fast Company. I, I don't think that they'd want to uh, put to themselves at risk. Yeah. So, so can we set a date to have a joint meeting? We probably want to have it in a bigger time. event. We can't do it tonight. We have to do it jointly with BCI, BCI and they've agreed to it. Yeah. 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 But we, we really need an agenda for it. Just, That's, you know, we need maybe some people. Can tell it. Because not just from the hip. I frankly don't know very much about it. And with all due respect to the people in this room, I don't think there's I think about. Andrew Ridgey is a really good person from our board. Yeah, we should talk, talk to him. Yes. On the Andrew. Hospitality Association. I think yeah. he'd be a good person. I, I, I don't think he has an agenda in this. Yeah. He's yeah. Just, no, I don't I think, think Henry would be a good person, too. Yeah. Right. Well, but I mean, we can at least know that some people. Yeah. You obviously know. Do you have thoughts about how it could be useful for you? Provide deliveries through Grubhub that we know of, because they can probably tell you if they buy command. Incredibly complicated issue. I mean, I think there's no doubt there's street safety issues, but there's also employment and immigration issues, and it's just there are just so many facets to it. I know there's a lot of conversation about it downtown. I know the mayor's office is having conversations with different groups about it, about it downtown. Um, it's an incredibly complicated right. yes. issue. Sure. When we were first thinking about it and talking to the mayor about it and thinking about enforcement, it was, it was you know, when we first, you know, put submitted legislation around. So it was really around enforcing it at on the store level, at the restaurant level, mm -hmm. so that the workers wouldn't get penalized. Nobody wants to penalize the poor guys that are just trying to live like yeah. they live on the tip. But now um, we learn they are penalized. But I think you know the delivery systems have changed in the last two years. There's been an incredible shift. Um, so part of are. it is an unintended consequence of the of the wage change. Um, that restaurants are just doing all their deliveries through delivery services now rather than hiring other guys. So it's much harder to hold respons restaurants responsible. I mean, that was the tack we were hoping to be able to take. We thought it would be effective. Mm -hmm. We have to rethink. And I don't, I don't have a good answer, unfortunately. So I think we should wait. I think we should wait until there's more. Substance yeah, I don't know to, if we have enough to well, start the meeting. I mean, one of, the, and one of the things we hear all the time, and one of the things that's so scary is the speed of the e-bikes and how silent they are. Sometimes I think right. if you just added a little noise to them, yeah. that would be helpful. Put put some some noise noise baseball cards in the uh, was it? They can see you, but you can't see them. Right. Um, it's like the past, past books. They don't make any sense. Right. I yeah. was walking past the car. My son grabbed my arm and pulled me back because there was a it's, Tesla. It's not just, just the Teslas. It's any of the electric cars. Yeah, uh, Toyota's Prius yeah, and, and there are some actually new electric um, silent 
virtually silent buses that are being tested, and I said, you've got to, you have to make a little sound. They have people to make noise. Hear them coming. And not only that, you've got people who are visually impaired. Mm -hmm. Yes. They really are at you know, it's not just those of us who can jump out of the way. I'll just say that I was at the uh, March in Norway last night for the two kids who were killed in Park Slope, and the best sign was one that said, I wish the driver had been on an e bike. I wish the driver wasn't licensed after all of the uh, yeah, infractions yeah. that she had had. Mm -hmm. I wish she wasn't her. licensed. Good luck with that. <laughs> So, well, this was a great she was licensed. Okay. There was just a lot of violations. So she should not have been driving. Suffice okay, are we? Oh, so, can, can I just say one last thing? On the, okay. I, I agree it's a really complicated issue, and there are any number of things that can be said to make it even more complicated. Uh, I think the more that we can learn about it and form some smarter opinions. I say that, I say that to say that the more conversation, the better. Okay, okay. great. We're not yeah, dismissing it, right? Yeah. We want okay. to get more information. Yes. We want to get people here that can speak intelligently on the subject. Yep. And I think if you DOT. Know of anyone, let us know. I'm sorry? If you, if you know of anyone, just. You, well, yeah, DOT, because DOT has yeah. enforcement responsibilities. The yeah. NYPD. NYPD has enforcement um, responsibilities. Someone from the restaurant. Yes, sorry, sorry. Somebody, Dolly. Somebody from the. Uh, 